we gotta start with the important the important questions i think you already know what i'm gonna ask um just off top man why'd you choose mexico all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another episode of jump chat it's your boy johan gomez alongside my co-host tanner tessman we got a very special guest alongside us here today before i let y'all know who it is make sure to like share and subscribe but anyway we got our boy julian at Ojo with us here today thank you for coming on my boy Thank you guys. A pleasure, man. It's, it's been a long time since I have been on here, man, but it's good. It's good. I'm, I'm ready. I'm excited. Let's do this. I bet, bet, bet. I guess uh, we got to start with the important, the important questions. I think you already know what I'm going to ask. I'm also Mexican-American. Um, just off top, man, why'd you choose Mexico? Yeah, man. So I was literally I just got asked this question probably like, like a week ago, but um. I made a decision that was at heart, man. You know, ever since I was a kid, I always wanted to represent Mexico. Um, you know, growing up in a Mexican household, I I used to wake up to games, um, you know, woke up games or just have family gatherings at, at uh, you know, watching Mexico games. And, you know, I kind of idolized all these, uh, you know, all the Mexican legends. Um, it's, it was crazy to me. I never kind of, I never got, I never had a family gathering when, when U.S. was playing or anything like that. You know, it was more more exciting for me to, to get up and watch and watch Mexico around. And as a kid, you know, I always wanted to represent Mexico and, and put that Mexico jersey on. Um, but, you know, obviously as I got older and um, started to pursue my dream, you know, I was obviously with the, with the U.S. Uh, youth teams growing up. And uh, yeah, so it was honestly a, a very tough decision for me. Um, it was a decision that took a lot of stress out of me, a decision that took a lot of time, a lot of conversations with different people. Um, but ultimately I made a decision that was at heart. It made me feel good, you know, even, uh, even not rostering two games at World Cup qualifying, you know, it was. I still, I still feel happy with my decision. I'm still happy. I, I'm, I'm learning from a lot of guys there. You know, world class players, and you know, it was just like, like I said, man, it's just a decision that I made, a, made with my heart, and and yeah, well, I'm happy about it, and family's happy, so I'm good. Yeah, that's all you can ask for. All right, guys, football might be over the season, but college and pro hoops are in full swing. For all the latest odds, totals, player performances. Props to where the next fired coach is going to land. BET Online has all your betting needs. Head over to the website of your mobile de device to sign up today and receive your 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to get started. I know a lot of people say, uh, you know, he's American, like he was born in America. How could he choose Mexico? But I know what you mean, bro. Like those Mexican games growing up, they're like national holidays almost with your family. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I feel you a thousand percent, but yeah, you're saying it's difficult. Do you think it's the most difficult decision you've ever made so far? For sure. It definitely is at a young age, especially I think I was like 19 or 20 when I'm making the decision. Um, you know, not a lot of players have to make or have that dual citizenship and have to make that decision. You know, it's a beautiful decision that you have to make, you know, knowing that two countries want you to come and present their, their squad. Uh, obviously it was, it was a beautiful one, but it was a stressful one. And I think so far in my career, I think that was kind of one of my, my most difficult decisions that I've had to make and the toughest for sure. Obviously you've had a, you've had both like American teammates and uh, Mexican teammates. Have, have they uh, influenced your decision at all? Or was it, it, was it only like your family that you talked to or like different players like legit or, you know, talking to you saying like, Hey, you need to come play for us. Yeah, no. So it was like, I had conversation with them and just uh, didn't really, it didn't influence me, but it kind of gave me like a clear mind, you know, obviously legit and uh, all the, I, I talked to legit Sasha that was previously with the, with the national team, you know, all these guys that are on my team. I talked to Joe, or Jonathan Dos Santos, Chicharito, Efra, and, uh, you know, players that have been there and been in this, not my situation, but have represented the national team. Um, I had conversations with them, you know, I, I took time, you know, pros and cons. I took, I listened to them. Um, I don't think it really influenced me, but it kind of gave me like a, I mean, I guess you can say it influenced me because it kind of like let, allowed me to have the pros and the cons and things like that. But um, but they're all very, you know, they said that I need to make a decision that that's that I'm happy with. That ultimately, it's for me, and you know, people are gonna judge whatever decision I make. But if I'm happy and I'm and I'm okay with my decision, then that's all that matters. And they were very supportive. Uh, you know, they're all cool with with whatever decision I made, and that was that was kind of that was good as well. You know, it was it was helpful for me. Um, but yeah, it was. I guess you can say they, they helped me out a little bit in that in that aspect, but um, nobody really like turned their backs on me like that. Good. That's good. This next question for me comes uh, straight from my brother, Joguito, but uh, he wanted me to ask you, when did uh, Mexico start recruiting you? 
so I think it was maybe like 2019, 2019, yeah, they were when uh, our general manager came out here, Dennis Acosta was at, uh, at Galaxy. Um, yeah, they were recruiting me ever since then. I just never had, I never had my Mexican passport, uh, so I couldn't, you know, go go to the Mexican national team. Um, but, and I never wanted to make a decision because, you know, I hadn't gotten a, a first team call up for the U.S., so it wasn't like I was being tied down yet. And, you know, I knew that I was going to have to make a decision coming forward. Like, I knew that I was going to have to make a decision to to represent one country. And, um, you know, I kind of waited till that last uh, minute to, to make that decision. You know, it's, it's it's a big decision. It's a decision that that I'm going to have for the rest of my career. So, um, yeah, I'm happy. I'm happy for it. But in 2019, I think is when they started, like, reaching out to me and uh, when that I had a first call, when I had my first call with them. I was uh, I was doing a little bit of research. And I know you went on the Scuff podcast and you said that you will go with whatever country gives you more opportunities. Obviously, I know my brother's going through this also, but and you don't have to say it if they didn't make any promises. But did MX, did Mexico make any promises that were hard to pass up on or anything like that to try to convince you? Mm, nobody, no, neither side gave me any promises, you know, both sides. You know, it's, it's, it's a job. You have to work for you have to work for a spot. You know, they're not going to promise you anything. I don't think. Um, you know, it's something that you just have to go in and know that you're going to have to fight for for your position. You know, there's other players that have been there for a long time. And that was kind of what was going through my head. It's like, I need to get, I need to pick a squad now because uh, I want to be in consideration for the World Cup. And, um, you know, I can't just not pick a team and then a month before the World Cup try to go in the squad. You know, I knew that I was going to have to go in and, and fight fight for my position. And I, I need to get used to the players, the coaching staff. They have to get used to me. They have to learn things about me and stuff like that. So. Um, Nobody really promised me anything, but they did. But they did say, you know, that that I have a lot of potential and that uh, they can see me being part of the, the squad. You know, uh, you know, boats. You know, I'm I'm very young as well, and the future the future for both sides is is very big. So you know, I, I they were telling me that I'm gonna be a huge part of it. So um, yeah, like I said, I made a decision that was that hard. It's a tough one though. That's gotta feel good though, having a. Uh both countries kind of coming after you like fighting for you because I, I felt it in the academy for sure like being called up you get this extra confidence like on the field like knowing I don't know your players around you know that you're you're doing something big and they want to be in your shoes but having two countries coming after you like you said is not a position everybody can be in because not everybody has a dual passport but uh does it give you like that extra edge or confidence on the field to you know maybe show out a little better yeah, for sure. It definitely does it. I think it brings that a lot of pressure, you know, obviously making a making a decision now. But when I was in the process of making the decision, it was kind of stressful. And I felt like it was kind of affecting me just because I was always thinking about the decision and what was going on around me and not really focusing on, on soccer or not focusing on my playing. Um, it kind of, I think it affected me in a, in a not a bad way, but uh, I think it, it kind of threw me off a little bit. But as I made my decision, obviously, uh, now that I go that I've been with the national team, it's I, I feel much more confident when I come back. Obviously, you know, the rhythm when you go out there, they're playing at a faster speed. They're playing just little things that, you know, play play a huge role. And um, yeah, definitely when I came back, um, when I come back from, from the national team, I do feel a lot confident. I feel like I I go like another level. I step it up a little bit. And uh, obviously it's just maintaining that, obviously. But um with with Mexico, there's a lot of pressure, man. It's a huge amount of pressure. And, you know, everybody wants to see you see you consistent you know if there if there's a bad game you know you have a lot of people you know telling you it's a bad game and i i didn't really feel that when i was with them with the u.s national team you know when it was a when you had a bad game it was just like oh it's just another bad game but with the mexican national team if you have a bad game man i'm telling you the whole world is killing you like the whole whole mexico is killing you and i think that that's something so beautiful about it man it's like <clears throat> i was talking to chicharito and i was talking to all the players here it's like one of the main, like I had, I had someone ask me, what was the main difference between U.S. and Mexico? And I think the main difference is just the culture, bro. Like they eat, breed soccer, bro. Like everything, you know, you have a bad game and everybody's just for you, bro. You, the chefs, everybody like cleaning ladies, bro. It's, it's amazing. Like they treat you like a footballer. And I'm sure in Italy and out there, you know, they're, they're treating you like a real footballer. But um, yeah, it's crazy. It's like soccer, soccer in Mexico is something different, you know, pressure, pressures can be a beautiful thing and, and, and a horrible thing but when it's beautiful it's beautiful so so I think uh, pressure brings out the best out of all of us so it's it's been good but sometimes it's been bad <laughs> yeah 
we were me and Tim were just on an interview actually yesterday talking about that with someone who had asked us about it. But um, and I know how us Mexicans are, bro. And I've seen videos, and I know you know. Like, say they're asking for an autograph, they think you're the greatest thing in the world. You don't give them an autograph to call you Chupa Verga, like right there. They'll yeah. still change up so quick. It's hilarious. But uh, <laughs> you, you brought up pressure in the World Cup. I gotta ask you, bro. The fifth game. You feeling the pressure if you make that World Cup? Are we making it to the fifth game this year? I think that's just a standard that Mexico sets. You know, you, you have to make it to that fifth to that fifth uh, to that fifth game. You know, it's uh, that's kind of what um, what it is. It's not Mexico's not really. You know, you have to make it to the World Cup. Like you have to qualify for the World Cup. It's just, you have to win the fifth game. That's that's our big thing. You know, we we're all for it. You know, we have a tough group, obviously, but. Um, we're excited and we're us Mexicans, you know, we, we, we want that. We, we, we live for these moments and we want that pressure to be, you know, we we're excited for it and we know it's going to be, uh, it's going to be tough, but we're, we're all ready and we're going to give whatever we have to the grass. I feel like I'm getting outnumbered right now. I don't know what's going on. But, uh, <laughs> Johan's over here saying us Mexicans and I don't know what's going on here. I'm just pointed out. I feel like I'm getting outnumbered. <laughs> Um, hey, you know, you know, Chris told me to link uh, to connect with Julian on a different level because I know what I kind of know what he's talking about and stuff like that. So, but um, no, I would I wanted to give a little story real quick. So you know Thomas Roberts, right? Yeah. So back then, I think this is like you sixteen year, bro. So obviously, you know, like we're all FC Dallas, and so when someone would go to camp and they'd come back, you know, they talk to the guys that you know were involved in usually national team stuff like that, and they kind of tell like who was the best one and stuff like that. So I remember. Man's just like, bro, there's this kid. His name is Julian Araujo. He's different gravy, bro. He's different gravy. Like, and he was talking about, he was like, bro, but the craziest thing is like, he doesn't even care about soccer like that. He plays high school football or something like that, I swear. And um, and he was like, yeah, but he's nice at football too. But I swear this man gets stuck in. And and that was the first time I ever heard of you. And now, I don't know how long ago that was, but that was a, that was a funny story. But now. Yeah, crazy, because we were at IMG. We had a coach, Sean Securis, and um... – it was like my first camp ever and we're doing some passing but i'm playing high school soccer for real i'm really playing high school soccer and i played not even academy i think i'm playing like um just regular club or whatever and i don't even know how i got to the national team was img cup my first call up ever and um bro we were doing some passing and i was like up so much bro and he was like this is why we don't play high school soccer and i was like damn like damn for real but ever since after that, like I, I was on like every call of or whatever. I don't know, bro. It was just I don't know. That's just crazy. That that just brought that just came to my mind after you said high school soccer. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that, crazy, that's crazy. Bro. But now thinking about back to that, he was getting on to you for playing high school soccer. Now, fingers crossed, you make it to the World Cup. You're going up against Messi, bro. Like that is that not crazy to you? That's gotta that'll be crazy. Be, hell yeah, that'd be super crazy. For sure. No, but, um on the biggest stage, yeah, that's crazy. We got to talk about the MLS, though, because I feel like you've been playing in the MLS for, like, 25 years, <laughs> like a true vet. Like, uh, I, I don't know. I feel like it's been it's been too long, bro. I don't know. but crazy. Yeah, it's, it's going by super fast, bro. Super fast. For sure. I mean, playing for your hometown as well, like, what is that like? I know you you really uh, take pride in being from, you know, from L.A. And, and your what is your uh, your your Lumpuk. spot? Lumpuk? Lumpuk. Yeah, Lumpuk, Lumpuk. yeah. Yes. Yeah, so being from there and giving back to the community, you know, I, I see some stuff you do on Instagram, but what is it like playing for your hometown? It's super dope, man. You know, Lompoc's a little bit like two and a half hours away from L.A., but growing up, I've always uh, supported Galaxy and, um, you know, I've always, I went to games and, you know, watched all these guys come out of there. <clears throat> Obviously, when I played when I played Academy, I played at the Santa Barbara, Santa Barbara Soccer Club and we played against the Galaxy. It was just smack us like 9-0 type like nine zero whatever it was but it's because they had Uli, Alex Mendes, Efra, all these guys you know top ballers but um but yeah um it's it's beautiful man it's crazy you know we had we've had the most championships in MLS I think we're kind of like the um we're kind of the we're just authentic bro like we're we're just the most stable in MLS we we have so much uh so much history um but yeah it's a beautiful thing man it's kind of like a I'm super glad that I that I started off here at, at the Galaxy. Um, obviously, I have I've had players that have like uh, the players that have came in have always given it advice, gave us advice. You know, they're very hard on us, keeping us at a high standard, making sure that we're that we have our feet on the ground, making sure we stay humble and all that. So um, 
it's good, man. I'm a, I've always said that I'm, I'm very happy to have started the galaxy and, you know, whatever comes next will, will come next, but uh, I'm, I'm in no rush. I'm just waiting for whatever, whatever comes is, is for me. You said that on like another, about, though. that you said that on another podcast, I swear. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was talking about, I was talking to Tanner. I swear I saw two clips. One clip we were talking about Europe. Both the clips you're talking about Europe. One clip you say, yeah, bro, I want to go to Europe, highest level, all this stuff. A couple months later, you go on this other show and you were like, kind of like this. You were like, hey, you know, what, what's for me is for me. I don't want to go to Europe just because it's the highest level or to develop. I'm comfortable here. Yeah. I'm doing it here. If a club wants me, they got to come get me. Basically, that's what you were saying. You still yeah, feel that way now? I still feel that way. Yeah. Like if a club, a club wants me, they're going to come, you know, pay for me. They're going to come. Uh, I just want to go to a team that shows interest in me. You know, I don't want to go to a team and, uh, and, and not play, you know, I've had friends that have gone to Europe and, you know, don't, you know, they're not, they're not playing. Um, but I, I want to go to a team that, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to have a chance. I'm going to play games and I want to play. I obviously want to play at the highest level. I obviously want to go over there and my goal is to go over there, but you know, I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm in no rush to, what's going to come for me is going to come for me and what's meant for me is for me. You know, that's kind of how I live my days by like, if, if something's meant for you, it's going to be for you and whatever's not, it's not. I agree with that. I like that. But let me ask you though, because let's be honest, you're making good money at LA. Like Tan said, you're, you're in your hometown playing for arguably the biggest club in MLS. You're still on the national team. You're probably going to make the world cup if you keep it up. So like what, what like triggers you in your mind to stay hungry to still want to go to Europe? Because a lot of players would just be satisfied with with all that you're doing now. Um, I think it's just just like how I am, man. Just how how I go about my day. I just you know I obviously I know that if I continue to perform well here, stay consistent here, obviously I need to play games. You know to be on that World Cup roster, they want they want players that are informed, that are play, that players that are playing every weekend, players that are that are performing well. And that's what I want to do. You know, I don't, like I said, I don't want to go to a team and not play. And then that, that messes up my chances of making up the world cup roster. Um, I'm playing here at the galaxy. I'm, I'm starting, I'm playing with some of the biggest players in the world. I'm playing with, um, with top coaches. Um, it's obviously not an easy league. It's a, it's a tough league. Um, I'm still young. I'm 20 years old. You know, I don't really see, like, I, I don't like to say that I'm young and stuff like that, you know, cause you know, a footballer, you can be whatever age. If you're, if you're performing well, you're, 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 you're good, you know? Um, but, but I think it's just, yeah, man, just the way I am, like what's for me is for me and I'm, I'm going to continue to work hard. I think I've always just been a guy that, that just, you know, works hard and, you know, nothing's ever going to be get, uh, handed to me. So I got to work hard for whatever I want. Do you have a preference though, of if, if you were to go to leave, um, to leave LA, if you were to go to yeah. Europe, which country or even Liga Max in Mexico? No, I would, I would definitely after after Galaxy, I definitely want to go to like Bundesliga or um or La Liga. Um, those are kind of my two like where I want to go. But obviously, whatever you know, whatever's best for my career, I'm gonna I'm gonna take. So one of our, I think our editor was one who wanted us to ask you this. Apparently, you were linked heavily to Tottenham last year, That's recently. False. It's false. Yeah. I woke okay. up one day and I had time on my phone and whatever, a bunch of uh, requests. And I was like, what the hell? I called my agent. I was like, what's going on here? He said, I have no idea. It's not true. <laughs> I like so, that. Straight up. False. Okay. <laughs> Straight up. I like that. Obviously, you've played with uh, some big name players in L.A. And I want to personally ask just because, you know, I've, I've now seen it kind of with different teams. And obviously, we have Nani in the team and he was in MLS and there's certain guys to talk to. But. I can see being with him, like uh, how he performs, how he does on a daily and learning stuff from him. But what what do you think, like, uh, you know, playing with Zlatan or Chicharito, like these massive players, like what have you learned from them? Or like what's the difference you see between them that like they stand out? Just how competitive they are, bro. They take they take um, training very serious, you know, just the way they take care of their body, the way they, you know, they're coming in early, leaving, leaving, you know, after they're done with whatever they're doing. Um, you know, just keeping, making sure that everybody's at a high standard. They're, they're captains, you know, they've played all over the world. They've played different teams, you know, they're top f-ing players. Um, they, they they have a name for themselves and you know why. Uh, but yeah, man, it's two different players that I've played with, different personalities, but um, they're different in different ways, but they're super cool guys, you know, off the field, super, super dope people. Uh, you know, they're 
just regular people you know they're, they're cool but on the field you just like you said man i just like to see you know you, you can see what they do you can see why they're different why they've, they've made a name for themselves and why why they've played all over the world and how good they are but yeah they hold everybody to a very high standard making sure that everybody's um performing well you know if you're doing bad they're going to tell you what you're doing bad and if you're doing good you're, they're going to tell you you're doing good and they're going to help you improve and i think that was that's kind of the reason why i said you know i'm glad that that i started at the galaxy because um man, they've, they've been, they've all, everybody has kept the real, not just them too, but um, everybody on the team, you know, we have like players that I've, or players that when I first started, you know, they're always still checking up on me now, you know, making sure that I'm doing things well. And it's, it's super dope, man. It's, it's I'm, I'm grateful for sure. Do you have any crazy stories about, you know, playing with Slapdown or Chicharito, like behind the scenes? <sighs> crazy, I don't know, man. It's just not really crazy. I mean, it's not really, I don't think it's crazy to him. I mean, to us, it's probably crazy. But like in training, just the way, it's not really crazy, man. They just, Ibra's crazy just in general, bro. Like, <laughs> it was just like is there anything day, he's, uh, Yeah, is there anything like that stood out of what he said? Because when we played against him, he said some crazy things that are, I mean, it was hilarious, but he like believes it, you know? I don't know if playing with him, you like, you know, he thinks he's a god or whatever. This is what I've heard, so. Bro, he just talks a lot of crap, but he backs this thing up, bro. Like he'll, he'll, bro. He's he's cocky, but he block, he backs it up, bro. Like you can't even say anything to him. He's just, I, I don't know, bro. It's not really that crazy. It's just something that I seen every day. Like I don't know the way he would, yeah. you know, so if somebody would hit him, a defender would hit him, you know, he's over here just pop hitting you in the head, bro. Like it's just. For me, like, I didn't even get next to him. But one time it was, we were in training and then he picked somebody up and dropped them because he was mad. But that's, that's it. Like, it wasn't really, like, crazy like that, bro. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> it's, it's just it's funny, bro. Because we played against him and one of our players asked, uh, well, yeah, one of our players, uh, Zlatan asked where he was from, the player. And he was like, yeah, I'm from here. And then our player said, where are you from? And Zlatan just said, I'm from heaven. And that that was it. It's funny, man. <laughs> yeah, he, had the, he had some jokes, bro, for sure. Oh, that's, oh, that's crazy, funny. Uh, one of the fans asked, are you going to prom with that one fan who asked you? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with her. If, uh, if I have a day off, I'll go with her. A man dope. of the people. A man of the people, that's for sure. Yeah. And to think about we know. it, it's crazy. Like, one of my boys that I know, he owns a little taqueria out in the... Um, in uh in anaheim he's like one of my boys that i met out there about like two years ago and i guess like his dad isn't really like or her dad and his dad aren't um their brothers or something like that but they don't really get along so i went to his uh, after the game i went to his uh to go eat at his uh, restaurant and he told me that it was his cousin but that they don't talk it was crazy <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know I said yes to I was like, my bad, bro. <laughs> yeah. No, that's hilarious. As, all right, so I want to know, like, being from L.A., obviously, you know, you're kind of like a face of the team now. I see you in all the L.A. graphics, stuff like that. What's it like? I'm sure you, like, you, you get recognized quite a bit now. What's it like being recognized in the street? Hey, man, it's crazy, you know. It was like all I ever wanted to be is a professional soccer player growing up. But, you know, obviously I knew that came with a lot of things. Um. Sometimes in LA it's it's crazy. Uh, there's a lot of Mexicans. You know, they're they're Mexicans are crazy. <laughs> nah, it's all love though. It's um, but I get recognized by a lot of people. You know, it's uh, it's cool. You know, I don't I don't mind it. Um, uh, but yeah, it's it's gotten more. I think I've gotten more recognized ever since I started playing with the with the Mexican national team. Um, because there's a lot of Hispanics on or in LA, um, or Latinos or whatever in LA. So it's um. I think I've, that's played like a huge, a huge uh, role in like me getting recognized as well. But obviously, LA, yeah, I, even throughout my years, like I'll just be going out to eat sometimes and I get recognized, ask for a picture. But it's cool, man. Just people show love. So uh, I'm, I'm glad. I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool with it. That's good. I peeped you Is on. There, uh, I'll go ahead, Ted. No, I was going to ask. Uh, I mean, LA, I hear a lot of things about LA. Is there like a lot of distractions as a player? Um, being in LA and being around that the culture there, um, I'm sure they, there can be distractions. Um, you know, it's, it's LA. Uh, I think everywhere there can be distractions, but I'm sure if you ask anybody 
where they would want to play in the MLS is probably Galaxy or, or Miami now um, because of why, I don't know, maybe parties or clubs or whatever it is, you know, a lot of celebrities and big, you know, big cities. Um, but I think there, there definitely can be, be um, uh, distractions, but I don't think it's, I don't think just because I think that I've been like around LA so much as a kid, I don't think it's like been, um, right. been anything yeah. for me. But I have, I have family here now, or I have my brother that lives with me. So it's been cool. I just kick it with him, kick it with my dogs and just, just chill, man. Yeah. I peeped you on, um, I saw you in a YouTube video with some TikTokers yeah. recently. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny. I've always wondered, and I want to ask you just, uh, is there like any kind of usual like pressure like in those YouTube videos? I feel like there'd be mad pressure to like when they put you <laughs> on the spot. When they put you on the spot, tell you to like try to hit it top bins, and they're like, "Oh, it's this pro bro. soccer player." Nah, nah. It was it was funny, bro. Those guys are funny as so, hell. To be honest, um, I met them like um, I forget where I met them, but I invited them to a game. They came out to a game, hung out with them, went out to eat, did that YouTube video with them, and now we're just we're cool. We're we're, we're friends now. Talk every every probably every other day and. We're going to do another YouTube video, though. He wants to do another one because I guess he got, like, a lot of uh, a lot of love on that YouTube video. So uh, it's cool. Either. But, yeah, it was a lot of pressure on me, bro. <laughs> That's hilarious. No, nah, Anthony got to put up that. And what's crazy, bro, it was, like, it was at a soccer, like, little soccer park where we have a bunch of soccer fields, a bunch of club teams and stuff. And I had, like, three, like, two teams or whatever, two two little girl teams that were like, is that Julian Arado? They came up to me and I was like, damn, they're really about to watch me shoot right now. <laughs> I had just got done with the training session, bro. I was super tired. I was like, bro, do I really want to do this? Is this smart of me? I was having like some pain and I was like, let's get this over with. So I did it. Hey, hey like you said, Anthony, Anthony people. got a, yeah, Anthony got a cue the party where he actually did hit it top bands. All right, guys, I'm gonna just put it on the top right corner. No way he saves this. Hey, no le pegues tan fuerte, wey. So he actually did hit the top bench. No, that's love though. And it's cool, bro, to see like you've grown so much in the last years, but you still remain humble, which is crazy uh, to see. But um, here we always ask our signature question. Obviously, the whole thing is defining success. So we want to ask you. What's your definition of success? And do you think you've achieved it yet? That's a good question, bro. Um, definition of success. I think for me, it's just like, you know, I don't, I don't really ever find success. You know, I feel like I always want to, um, I always want to keep going. You know, I never want to feel comfortable. I think, uh, you know, failing is, is successful for me because I can I get up and I keep trying and I keep trying and I keep trying until I get it. You know, obviously there's been many times where I've been down and, you know, there's there's times where you just got to get up and, and keep going. Um, I, I never want to find that 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 success because I feel like people that find themselves successful, you know, get comfortable and, and they're they're no more hungry. They're, they're no longer hungry. But I always want to stay hungry. I always want to stay in an uncomfortable position. And, um, you know, I think what brings the best out of everybody is just being uncomfortable or being uncomfortable, being, being comfortable, being uncomfortable. You know, I think that's kind of what what's uh, made you know what's kept me going obviously what's uh what's continued to make me, me make me stronger and uh i always want to always want to uh, you know stay uncomfortable because that brings the best out of me and i know um i know you know like when i moved out of my house at like 15 15 years old you know i knew that i had to do it i was uncomfortable doing it but i left a lot of people behind me and um i know in order for me to uh, achieve my goals and my dreams I, I had to leave but uh yeah i don't think i've i've reached success yet but um I know I got a lot of goals and dreams that I want to, that I want to reach, but you know, I'm, I'm always going to find, find something to keep me going. And I, I'm, I'm never going to let someone tell me that I've been successful because uh, to me, I'm, I'm always hungry. I always want to, I always want more. Is there a part in your life where you get to like, where you reach it though, and you don't want more like at the end of your career, after you retire, like just being complacent with what you've done and where you're at. Sure. I think, I think there'll always, I think there'll be, there'll, there will be that time, uh, but I feel still like after I'm done playing soccer, I still like I'm feel I'm still gonna have some other goals, you know, off the pitch. I feel like I'm still gonna, you know, obviously within soccer, you know, I might find things that that you know once I achieve some things, I'll maybe find that. But as soon as I'm done playing soccer, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna set some other goals that I want to get to, and I'm gonna try to do that. 
someone asked so young as well yeah yeah hella young but someone asked if you would ever consider coaching coaching yeah probably <laughs> but like coaching little kids or like coaching pros oh <laughs> i don't know what <laughs> What do you, I don't know what they meant either, but I'm asking you what you meant. Little kids, not little kids, but maybe like like my age, you know, like Academy 19, 18, 17, maybe, uh, maybe USL. Just, I don't know. I don't, never really thought of that. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting question, but a good answer. Um, I guess just before we wrap up, we got to ask, we ask all our guests, what are your goals for this season? Just lay them out for us. Uh, my goals for the season is just to stay consistent with the Galaxy, you know, keep my starting spot. That's my number one goal, obviously. Um, another goal of mine is to make that World Cup roster or just be in consideration, obviously. I'm, 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 I want to work hard for it, but that all comes down to me performing here at the Galaxy and me staying consistent and getting games and me, and me just uh, performing every weekend. Um, but one of my goals is definitely to get, to get – um, to to make that World Cup roster, and I think those are the two goals that I've kind of set for me uh, for this for this season. Obviously, I, I have other goals um, that I want to go to Europe and stuff like that. But for this season, I just want to stay consistent. I want to have at least ten assists this year. Uh, it's a personal goal for me. Um, yeah, I want to have at least ten assists this year. I don't have any right now. I'm, I'm lacking on it, but um, but I want to get I want to get ten assists this year. I want to make that World Cup roster, and um, I just want to I want to win a championship with the Galaxy. Solid answer. Gotta start racking up the assist, though. Yeah, no, I got to. <laughs> you got to call on Chicharito, though. Like, hey, bro. Nah, he's been yeah, bagging he's, him, though. He does, bro. He's, he's a goal scorer. It's crazy. You played Warzone with him or not? I, yeah, I play with him every, you know, whenever we travel, I play with him. Or um, or at home, yeah, I play with him a couple of times. I've been with him actually a lot, but um, I like the first year. This year, I haven't, really, I haven't, I just haven't played a lot myself, so. And I guess uh, one of the last things before we wrap up, you got any? You got a message for the Mexican fans watching this? Los quiero mucho. Viva Mexico. <laughs> That's a good message. That's a good message. Dan, you got anything else for my boy? Yeah, I was going to ask. You know, we always ask our guests, you know, um, who do you want to see next on Chum Chat? And you got a lot of connections now. I mean, you play with some top players against top players. So you can say anybody. We're, you know, we're going to try to attain that person. But, you know. Who do you want to see next on Chum Chat? Let's see. Have you got Sebastian with Jet on there? No, we haven't. That would be a good one. That'd be a good one. Um Sasha, Sasha's cool. Sasha's okay. a very good guy, bro. Sasha's very cool. Yeah, for sure. Those are good. I think we can definitely, I think we could definitely pull those two. Yeah. Um, for sure. And we also have this thing here. We call it the Chum Chat Blessing. So basically what happens is players like you or people come on and then after we give them this chum chat blessing and they, they start popping off that, you know, they make their debuts, they score on goals, they make a transfer, they're in the national team, first call up, whatever it may be. So, you know, I think for you, I think the chum chat blessing will come, you know, around November, December, you know, I just, I'm thinking about the timeline. So just be on the lookout for the chum chat blessing. Yeah, appreciate it. I hope, I hope it comes for sure. I'll be looking for sure. Nah, enough. Nah, it'll for sure come. It's and coming. Two things will come. Tennis is for sure. And for World sure. Cup roster. Fifth game, I don't know. Fifth game, I don't know. That's asking a little bit too much, but that's up to you. That's <laughs> yeah. not up to us. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, God. All right, brother. Uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode. His Instagram will be linked the whole time. Thanks to our editor, Anthony. This episode was presented by BET Online. And um, if you like the content, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. As we always say, go find your own success. Deuces.